Hello. In this video I'll be demonstrating how to add a button control to a door featuring the doors from the More Doors package which is available on Epic Marketplace. Now I need to point out that this demo uses the updated version to More Doors so you will need 4.26 or later just make sure you have the update and let's go ahead and do an overview and show you how this is going to work. Okay, here's a road map of what we're going to do. The bottom two boxes are the door blueprint itself, so we don't have to worry about those. Uh, that's already done for us in the more doors package. So we're going to set up these top four boxes. And what's going to happen is, is that we're going to set up a client-side version and a server-side version, even though they're actually inside the same scripts. Um, and the way this works is that when a player hits a key, it will signal event inside our door button blueprint. That in turn is going to uh, trigger a call over to our modified player controller which will send a signal between the client and the server and the server side uh, player controller in turn will go ahead and recall the server side of the door button blueprint and when the server side uh, door button blueprint decides that the player is allowed to open the door it will send a signal uh, to the door itself and trigger the door movement. The door movement uh, will be passed on to the clients again so that everybody is in sync. There is one little exception here with the green arrow. Uh, in the case where the client is on a listen server or if he's playing single player or if he's playing inside the editor, we don't need to make this uh, remote procedure call via the uh, player controller uh, it can go ahead and call itself directly since it's on the same uh, same machine the client and server be in the same spot uh, we can just go ahead and, and call the trigger door directly and then from then on the, the door works uh, like it did before it's a little confusing just kinda looking here but uh, it'll make more sense and we'll go through it step by step okay so here we have a sample level with a roll door and we'd like to add a button to this roll door so that we can uh, interact with it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a blank uh, a blueprint for our door button. And we'll do that by blueprint class, actor, and we'll rename this Oops. my roll door button blueprint. And the other thing we're going to need is we're going to need a, a modified player controller class so that we can set up the uh, remote procedure call. Um, chances are you already have a modified player controller class in which case you can just use that one. Uh, this one doesn't have one yet we're, since we're starting from scratch so I'm going to go ahead and create one. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to come over here to world settings and find our player controller class and hit the plus sign and a box will pop up. We will call this my player controller blueprint and we want this in our blueprints directory and go ahead and hit OK and this little window is going to pop up. Um, let's go ahead and hit save and we're going to close this because we're not ready to work with this just yet. And let's go ahead and open our new door blueprint, our new button blueprint. And here we go. So let's get started building our blueprint. The first thing we need to do is we need to add a box collision. And this is essentially going to be an area that the player will need to be standing in in order to operate the button. This means that the player will have to be standing right next to the button in order to push it and instead of being across the room or on the other side of the level. And we got that created. The other thing we need to do is go ahead and set the collision on this. And we're going to go ahead and open this, change it to custom. Uh, the default is going to be ignore with the exception of the pawn which we're going to set to overlap. And that will take care of that. The other thing we need to do is we need to add a variable and this variable is going to point to the door that we're trying to control and we were going to call this target door 
And we need to go ahead and change this to a roll. Change it to roll door base blueprint object reference. And there's actually several different types of blueprints depending uh, which type of door you're trying to control. In this case, we're controlling a roll door, so it's the roll door base blueprint. If we're uh, controlling a garage door, it would be garage door base blueprint. If we're trying to control one of the swing doors, it would be swing door base blueprint. But uh, that takes care of that. And I guess we can just go ahead and compile and save just to get started. And now we're ready to go over to our event graph. So let's go ahead and take another look at our flow chart. And what we're going to do is that we're going to set this up by going through the flow in much the same manner that this uh, flow chart is set up. So the first thing we need to do is that we need to create an event to receive the uh, keystroke to operate the door. And so let's go ahead and add a uh, key event. Open up our, our blueprint again. And we're going to kind of scroll this over, make some room. And let's add the key event. In this case, it's called Action Events Interact. And there we go. Now we need to uh, look ahead here a little bit. I'm going to add one more event, which is going to be a custom event. So add event, add custom event. And we're going to call this Trigger Door. And this is what's going to get called from the RPC on the server side uh, when the server decides that it's okay to open the door. And the other thing we're going to need is that we're going to need to add an input to this. And we're going to call it Player Controller. And we're going to make that a Player Controller class. Object reference. There we go. And we'll go ahead and compile and save that. Now our key event needs to call a function in our player controller class, which unfortunately doesn't exist right now. And that function is what's going to send the RPC message between the client and the server. So we need to go ahead and add that. Go ahead and get that out of the way and open up our player controller class. And now we need to add a custom event. So add event, add custom event, and we're going to call this trigger roll door RPC. And the other thing we need to do is that we need to change the replication from not replicated to run on server. And finally we need to go ahead and add an input parameter to that. And we're going to call this input parameter target roll door and we need to change the type to my roll door button blueprint here we go object reference and go ahead and compile save that and that allow us to go back to the other script and here we are back in our door button blueprint uh, just to save some time, I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste the uh, script here for our input key event. And there we go. Uh, I'll go ahead and explain what's happening here. And zoom in. Alright, we get our key event, and what we're going to do is that we're going to get our player controller. And I'm going to recast that as our modified player controller. And going to move on through and this is where we're going to decide whether this is a listen server or a remote client and we'll take a quick peek over here and basically we're determining whether we need to take this path over here or skip across and take this path directly over here in this case if it has authority this would be the green path uh, we can go ahead and call ourselves because there is no client-server difference. They're one and the same, so we can call the trigger door directly. 
And if we're a remote client, we need to go ahead and call our modified player controller class and that function that we just made. And we're going to do it that way and pass the, a pointer to this script so that uh, this script gets executed, the trigger door function gets executed over on the server side. And that's basically all that's doing. And so, let me bring that back. So if we're a remote server, or a remote client rather, we're going to go ahead and take this path uh, through here. If we're a listen server or a single player, we're going to skip straight across and we won't even bother with this up on top. And so now we're ready to go ahead and take care of our trigger door function. Well, actually, before we start messing with the trigger door event, uh, we're going to come back over here and compile and save. And jump over here to our modified player controller and we're going to go ahead and finish this function just to get it out of the way and what we're going to do is we're going to take our target roll door do a little sanity checking on that make sure that it is valid and then if it is valid we're going to call our trigger door Connect that. Tidy up a little bit. And there we go. So our RPC function uh, will get called on the client side and this will show up on the server side. We will check to see that we have a valid script calling us. Uh, I don't know why it would be invalid but uh, it's always good practice to make sure your pointers are good. And if it is, then we'll go ahead and call the trigger door function that we're going to go ahead and work on here in just a moment. Go ahead and compile and save this. In fact, we're, we're done here, so we can go ahead and close it. And now we can start working on our trigger door. Okay, and like before, just to save a little bit of time, I'm going to do a, a copy-paste. There we go. And I'll explain what's happening here. And connect that to there. Alright, so when the trigger door event is called, we go back over here and look at our graph. That is this box right here over on the server side. And depending on whether we came through this path or through this path, they're both going to call trigger door. The first thing we're going to do is go ahead and check to see that we have a door uh, that we can actually control in case uh, we forgot to assign a door to this script um, that would be bad actually in fact make one quick change here let me call this variable up and we need to make this instance editable this little checkbox right here so that uh, we can change it inside our map there we go um, Anyways, if this pointer is valid, we, we've uh, been assigned a door to control, we're going to do a little checking here to see if the player is eligible to work this door. In this case, we're just going to take the player controller and then pull out the player state and check to see if this player is a spectator. And if he's not a spectator, we're going to go ahead and do the toggle door function on the door. And this little section of code right here, you can put about anything you want in this. Uh, in this case, we're just checking to make sure that he's not a spectator. But if you wanted to check to say if the player was on a certain team, or if he had a key card, or had accomplished some other task, this is where you would put it just before you, you call the door function to work the door. Anyways, uh, at this point the door should function. And go ahead and compile this and we're about ready to give it a try and one more thing needs to be done before we try this and we need to go ahead and enable inputs to this script so find enable input and we're going to hook this to our begin play and go ahead and get player controller And hook that up. Pile.
I'll save and get this out of the way. And get rid of that. Okay. Now we're ready to go ahead and, and put our script here in our map. So I'm going to drag this in. And we're going to position our collision box, which isn't set up yet. But uh, we're going to go ahead and put it right in front of our button so that it will recognize when the player is standing in front of the button. And that's good. And the other thing we need to do is take our eyedropper here for the target door and select the door that we want to control. Just like that. Uh, if all is well, we should be able to hit the play button and operate the door. So, here we go. We run up to the door, and we'll hit our E key for interact, and there it goes. We hit E again, and down it comes. Now the toggle door function, the way this works is that you can stop the door in mid-travel. So we're going to do that hit the key it'll stop, hit it again it'll come down, hit it it'll stop, and that's not unlike a regular garage door. So that's all working. So what we need to do now is go ahead and set up our collision boxes because we can actually work this door from really far away which we shouldn't be able to. And we're going to take care of that. So let's go ahead and take care of our collision boxes. Reopen our blueprint again. And where are they? Okay, we don't have the collision set up yet, so let's go ahead and do that. And click on our box. And the collision is set. Now we just need to add our events. So I'll move this over. First thing we need to do is add a begin overlap event like so. And we need an end overlap as well. Just like that. Okay. So what's going to happen is is that we'll enable the inputs when the player walks into the box and we'll disable the inputs when the player walks back out of the box. And I cheated. Went ahead and did a copy paste just to save some time so you didn't have to watch me fumbling with all this. Uh, it's not difficult. All we have here is that when we do the uh, begin overlap from our collision box, we go ahead and cast the other actor, which will be our player, into a character. And we check to see if he's locally controlled. And if he is, we go ahead and enable input. And when we do an end overlap, we essentially do the same thing with the exception that we do a disable input. And one more thing we need to change is up here in our begin play. We need to go ahead and change this to a disable input so that a player just entering the game can't control the door unless he walks over to it. So we're going to go ahead and say disable input. Like so. A little neater. There we go. Compile and save. Go ahead and close this. And we can try it again. This time we should not be able to work the button from across the room. We're too far away. And we hit the key. Nothing happens. We walk up to it. And there we go. We walk away from it. And nothing happens. And so that's working okay. And so now the question is, okay, I want to control the door from both sides. You know, how do I do that? And it's actually very simple. I just need to come over here to the other side. And I'm going to come over here to my more doors. And meshes, buttons, and we're going to add a, let's just add a keypad out here. Yeah, that's about the right height. You position it like so. Now we can go back to our button controller, our button blueprint, and put in a button control. 
and we'll position that next to the keypad like so take our eyedropper assign it to the door and go ahead and save everything just in case uh, the video recording software sometimes doesn't get along with the editor and we'll go ahead and hit play and see how this works we'll walk up to the door uh, we'll open it go outside and now we'll close it and that's all there is to it so the only remaining question is okay how do I control the garage doors and the swing doors well this script is basically a blueprint for the other two types the big changes are this variable type right here the target door uh, it's currently set oops, come back it's currently set to roll door base blueprint for the roll door and if you're copying the script over you would need to change this to either garage door base blueprint or swing door base blueprint as appropriate the other thing you need to do is come over here to our modified uh, player controller script and add two more RPC calls and we already have our roll door RPC you need to go ahead and add one for the garage door and the other one for the swing door and set the variable types on the uh, parameters as appropriate you would also need to come over here and where to go yep, scroll down you need to change this on our interaction event uh, where it's calling the roll door RPC you would go ahead and change that to garage door RPC or swing door RPC as appropriate and that's about only changes you really need to make you could do some other things for example if you wanted to open the door when our collision box was say taking damage you could go ahead and do that uh, here in our trigger door like I say we're checking for a spectator if you wanted to do things like team play uh, key cards or some other things you go ahead and do that uh, but otherwise this blueprint here uh, provides a pretty good starting point for you know doing whatever you want and I'm just going to kind of leave it here at that and say good luck